Hello everyone, this is White Wolf Investing. As I'm sure you can see in the thumbnail and in the title, today we are going to be talking about ETFs. First we are going to see what is an ETF, then the pros and cons of investing in ETFs, and finally I'll be talking about my top 3 ETFs for the near future. But without any further ado, let's get started. So you ask, what is an ETF? Well, ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. You probably know what a fund is, right? A fund is an instrument through which you can invest your money into a pool of stocks or bonds, for example. And the, the main difference between a, a fund and an ETF is that a fund only trades, usually only trades once per day after market close, and an ETF trades actively throughout the day. So you can actually buy and sell shares of an ETF throughout the day multiple times through your broker, your, the app you use to invest. So ETFs, it, they usually, usually track either an index or a commodity, right? For example, you've heard about, you most likely heard about the S&P 500, the index that tracks the 500 biggest companies in the US. Well, there's the, an ETF called, uh, with the ticker SPY, you commonly called SPY for obvious reasons, that tracks this index. So when people believe that the 500 biggest companies in the US will perform well, the S&P 500, they usually invest in the, in the ETF SPY. Same thing with GLD, an ETF that tracks gold. Say you want to buy gold, but you don't have the money for, for a gold bar, so you're as broke as me, but you still want to invest in gold. Well, you can invest in the, the ETF GLD. It would be as investing in gold, but you are actually not buying gold, you're buying shares of an ETF that tracks gold. So if gold prices go up, the shares of this ETF also go up. Now there are multiple types of ETFs, as you can see in this screenshot taken from Investopedia. I recommend you take a, you pause the video and you read through, through them, but as you can see there are bond ETFs, industry ETFs, currency ETFs, commodity ETFs and inverse ETFs. So now moving on to the pros and cons, and let's start with the pros. The first pro is, as I said already, if you invest in an ETF, it would be as investing in multiple companies at once. For example, I mentioned the SPY already, and if you buy shares of the SPY, it would be as investing or buying pieces or shares of the 500 biggest companies in the US, right? Think about it as a, a reverse funnel, right? So when whatever you put, a normal funnel, whatever you put in becomes something narrow, something concentrated, right? Now, a reverse funnel, you put in something narrow, something concentrated, and it becomes something generalized, right? So it's, you put your money into an ETF and your money is spread around over multiple companies. So yeah, this should still be under the part of what is an ETF, but the point is that it is a diversified investment. It's a less riskier investment when you invest in an ETF. Now, another positive point of investing in an ETF is if you have to pay commissions, right? For example, I have to pay $5 per trade. Now, there are ETFs with over 3,000 companies in them. So imagine if you had to buy shares of the 3,000 companies. Your commissions, your fees would be huge, right? But if you buy an ETF, you'd only pay commissions once for the ETF, but you are still investing in all the 3,000 companies. Now, a third positive about investing into ETFs is you can have exposure to one industry in specific, right? Remember the screenshot that I showed in uh, of Investopedia showing that there are industry ETFs? Let's say that you believe that one specific industry, whatever it is, will perform well in the next few years. But you don't want to spend your time researching the industry, seeing what companies you think will perform above average, what companies will be better than the other ones. So you just invest into an ETF and the management team will take those decisions for you. Now, speaking about the management team, let's switch over to the cons. Now, the first con is that all ETFs have an expense ratio. After all, the people that spend their days analyzing the market in your place, they also have to get paid, right? So you actually have to pay attention to the, to the expense ratio. For example, the SPY has an expense ratio of 0.09%, which is great, but at the same time, it is one of the lowest expense ratios out there. I'd say a normal expense ratio is somewhere between the 0.20% and 
to the 0.80%. So this is a fee that you actually have to pay annually. So another con of investing into an ETF is, which is kind of a rookie mistake in my opinion, is not knowing what the ETF holds, the, the ETF's holdings. As I said in the pros, you could invest in an ETF you wanna, if you want to have exposure to one specific industry, but you don't want to research companies yourself. But still, I believe that you are responsible to know, for knowing what companies the ETF you invest in is in its place investing in. And I actually, if you know what you are doing, you could always outperform the ETF because you have more exposure to the companies that you believe will take the biggest market share or that will grow the, the fastest, right? A third negative of investing into an ETF is that they are actively traded in a stock exchange, right? So they are intraday volatile when compared to a normal fund. So, but anyways, if you are investing with a long-term target, a long-term horizon, this should never impact your investing decisions. Now, I do believe that ETFs are a great start for someone that is still learning about the stock market or that is still new to the stock market. And let's switch over to the three ETFs that I personally like. And remember, these are ETFs that I like. I recommend you do your research on them and see if they please you as well. Now I could talk about the mainstream ETFs that everybody knows about already, as for example the, the SPY that I already mentioned once or twice in this video, or the Triple Q, which tracks the NASDAQ 100 index, or the VGT, which holds over 340 tech companies, or the VTI, which holds over 3.5 thousand companies, or I could talk about ARK uh, Invest Funds uh, ETFs, as for example their ARK K, their Innovation ETF, with a return of more than 152%, I believe, in 2020, or their ARK F, the FinTech Fund, with over 108%, uh, I believe, in 2020 return. So everybody knows or the majority of people knows about these funds, these ETFs, these ETFs, and I'm not going to be talking about those. I'm going to be talking about three ETFs that are not so well known. The Lithium and Battery Tech ETF, ticker LIT, LIT, which is LIT, and I know it's a lame joke. But still, Lithium is becoming one of the most researched or needed materials on Earth due to their usage in electrical vehicles' batteries, right? And everybody is predicting the EV market to keep growing uh, at a large rate, actually, over the next few years. So I believe that Lithium is actually kind of a backdoor play, let's say. Anyways, this is an ETF that invests in the full cycle of Lithium production from mining to refining to battery production, Plus, with President Biden pushing for an EV revolution, this only makes me more confident in the future of this ETF. Now, just take a quick look at their holdings. Their top holding is Albemarle Corporation, I believe that's how you pronounce it, which is the largest lithium provider for batteries. The second is Gunfeng Lithium, which um, is the biggest, the world's biggest uh, miner or refiner of lithium. And the third is Samsung SDI, a subsidiary, a subsidiary of Samsung, which also produces batteries and of course they have to tell they have to throw Tesla in there just because why not right moving on enter MJ ETF full name ETF MG alternative harvest it is a cannabis ETF and I've made a video about cannabis the cannabis sector that you can check out here and I do expect 2021 to be a good or excellent actually excellent year for the cannabis sector and I expect them to have uh, also a uh, good next two, next two, three years ahead of them. This is mainly due to the fact that there are continuously more and more states legalizing recreational use of cannabis. Now, just taking a quick look at their holdings, their top holdings are companies like GW Pharmaceuticals, Afria, Tilray and Kronos, which are the usual companies that everybody talks about when discussing the weed market, the cannabis industry. Now for the final ETF, we have EFA, which actually the full name is iShares MSCI EAFE. It is an ETF that invests in companies outside of the US and Canada. Actually, the EAFE stands for Europe, Australasia and Far East. They usually stick to developed countries, which is great. And I like this because I believe that you should also have a, a geographical diversification, not just an industrial one or a sector one. 
Now the top holdings are also mostly well-known companies such as Nestle, ASML, Roche and uh, Louis Vuitton for example. To conclude, let's just have a quick recap of what we discussed about today. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund and it allows you to invest in multiple companies at once in a less riskier manner. And you can buy shares of an ETF like you can buy shares of any other stock. Three ETFs that I personally like are LIT, MJ and EFA. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you learned something from it and I expect you to see you in the next one.